Mr. Chairman, I, I listened to your opening statement, and uh, as I as I understand, expressing frustration that um, the House wasn't going to be given an opportunity to mark up a, a bipartisan infrastructure bill, and and I think your frustrations with what was included and excluded in that bill. Um, yet we're here in a markup session on this legislation, um, and I have a feeling that that you're going to be opposing every single amendment that, that we offer, um, that anyone offers. And, and so it's, it's interesting to hear you express frustration about, about the inability of the House to actually have its voice heard, uh, the inability of the House to actually represent the constituents that sent us here, but, but to, to, to lead a markup session where effectively our voices are going to be stopped. Um, Mr. Chairman, this bill includes $3.5 trillion in spending. $3.5 trillion, with a T. Th that, that amount of money is, is completely mind-boggling. This is, this is record territory for excessive spending. Yet, I heard you talking about wildfires. Um, doesn't include funds to recover from wildfires. Um, the community that I represent, we're, we're still uh, picking up the pieces from Hurricane Ida, getting pounded by Nicholas right now. And this bill doesn't do anything. That does absolutely nothing for those folks. But don't worry, because if you go visit the Presidio in, in San Francisco, California, where the speaker represents, you're going to get a $200 million upgrade to your golf course, your restaurant, and whatever other luxury features this place has. $200 million being invested in the Presidio and Speaker Pelosi's district. That, that, let me put it in perspective. We were looking it up last week. There are two homes within like a block that are on sale for $28 million. There's, a, there's another house within a couple blocks that's for sale for $46 million dollars. So yeah, this is just like Main Street average America. This is, this is crazy that here we are spending these absurd dollars in, in, in these categories that have absolutely no American priority. They're, they're just 100% pork for the Speaker of the House. Yet this bill doesn't put a penny toward actual recovery from disasters. In fact, this Congress still hasn't done anything, zero, for the victims from 2020's disasters, which includes wildfires, and of course includes hurricanes Laura, Delta, Zeta, and others. We were hit by five hurricanes last year and just got hit by Hurricane Ida. And I want to remind my friends up in New York and New Jersey, look, Pennsylvania and other states got hit. I will work with y'all. I will fight to get you recovery dollars all day long. And I'm very sorry about the rainfall y'all got. We also got winds that were clocked at up to 194 miles an hour and 15 feet of storm surge. We're two weeks after, almost. And we still have areas that don't have electricity, don't have cell phone coverage, don't have internet, don't have water, and don't have wastewater. These aren't communities that can afford it. Mr. Chairman, this bill is a slap in the face to millions of Americans. It's an absolute slap in the face. I haven't heard anybody, anybody call and say, hey, I want you to put $9 billion in transit on top of the $69 billion that we put in it last year whenever these same transit systems were shut down or running loads 85 to 95% less than they were previously. Can, can, can you imagine the public's response if Congress worked 85 to 95% less, but we got that kind of money, got but more money for, for, for working less? Mr. Chairman, this is, this is disgusting what's happening. I plan on offering a number of amendments to reflect true priorities of true Americans and not go out there and irresponsibly spend three and a half trillion dollars on priorities that simply don't exist. 
We represent people, not political parties.